September 5th, there was an engine shutdown in flight on a Transaero Boeing B767 in Barcelona, Spain. I came across this on YouTube, actually, when a passenger filmed flames bursting out of the left engine, and then the engine subsequently shut down, and the plane was forced to have an emergency landing. Also, on September 5th, there was an unresponsive pilot that led to a plane crash in the sea near Jamaica. This was at least the second and possibly the third event in two days of a pilot passing out in flight. F-16s were sent up to escort the plane. They saw the pilot was hunched over at the controls, and they have not found the wreckage of that plane yet. Oh, so it crashed. Yeah, it was um, a, a gentleman, I believe his last name was Glazer. He and his wife, he's a property manager in New York of a real estate company. And she died too? Yeah. So oh. this was a propeller craft? Yes. Private plane, yeah. On September 6th in California, there was a small plane crash in Warner Springs. Warner also, Springs, so that anybody and everybody knows, is a naval installation. It is a high desert training area. I attended the Survival Evasion Resistance and Escape School at Warner Springs. It's above Miramar. Also on September 6th in Iowa, there was a farm helicopter that crashed in Potawatomi County. And the NTSB had released a report in March of this year saying there had already been 10 helicopter crashes in the first three months of 2014, and that was far beyond anything else they had ever observed statistically, and they have not offered an explanation. There's a lot of that going around. Vigner. On September 7th in Minnesota, there was a fatal plane crash north of Montevideo. On September 8th, in Colombia, there was a plane crash killing 10. Also on September 8th in New York, two were killed when a small plane crashed into a rail car. Also September 8th in Nevada, one was killed in a plane crash at a national championship of air races during a qualifying run. On September 9th, there was a plane crash in Mexico leaving five dead. That was in Sinola. Sinaloa. Sinaloa. Mm -hmm. Also September 9th in Texas, there was a plane crash at near La Porte. Also September 9th in Connecticut, there was a plane crash in Watertown. Are these commercial or private or mixed? Mixed. Most okay. of them are private, small planes. Yeah. On September 10th in Virginia, there was a small engine plane crash near I-77 in Carroll County. Pilot was injured. On September 10th in Texas, a pilot was killed when his plane crashed near Austin Airport. On September 11th, there was a small plane crash reported at Cascade Airport in Idaho. September 11th, there were two fighter jets that crashed in the Western Pacific, reported by the U.S. Navy. They have not given a reason for that crash. Is that like over by Okinawa? Um, I want to say that it was near Guam, but I'm not yeah. positive, and I, I, there may have been a drill going on in the area. I'm sorry, 250 miles west of Wake Island. Oh, Wake Island. Oh. But there were two fighter jets that crashed. Out in the middle, yeah. <clears throat> Also, September 11th, a UPS cargo plane had an emergency landing due, due to hydraulic problems. We Sep know what that is. <laughs> September 11th, a military plane crashed in Gulu. Pilot ejected to safety. Do you have a reason on that one? No. September 12th, plane flips while landing at Austin Executive Airport. This was the second plane crash there in a week. Wow. Ground loops? Ground loops. Jesus. Somersaults on the runway. On September 13th in Maryland, small plane flips over at Maryland Air Park. That may have been weather related. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Also, uh, there's seven events, six or seven events just on September 13th. Alaska, there's a small plane that crashed near Mount Suzitna. In the United Kingdom, man injured after North Chapel plane crash. In Georgia, a woman hospitalized after a plane crash in Walton County. In South Africa, two were injured in East Rand. When a plane crashed also in South Africa, same day, two hurt, were hurt in Alisdale during a small plane crash. 
and today there were three events september fourteenth in canada there was a plane crash near brigden there was a small plane crash three were killed in slovenia and mudgy australia two died in a in a small plane crash so this is just the last eight nine days what's happened and there were only two of these published in mainstream media one was the jamaican flight because it was being tracked all over twitter at the time uh... when it occurred and then there was a missing there's another missing plane that's not even on this list that had left the dominican republic on the twelfth and that plane has not been heard from and no wreckage has been found david rockefeller's son was killed in a plane crash on its father's birthday just a couple weeks ago with the small planes you're looking to for a couple of different indicators and in a lot of cases this is going to be Wegner, but there are many other reasons for small plane crashes and in three cases that we're certain of uh, the case of uh, John Kennedy Jr. Uh, oh yeah the Wisconsin uh, senator uh, his name escapes me right off of the Wellstone. top, right? Well, Wellstone. Yes, and uh, David Rockefeller's son. Well, those were prearranged events. That's oh, yeah. definite. So you've got that small planes, uh, maintenance, and actual handling. Uh, you have a lot more trouble with crosswinds, that variety of things. So on an examinational basis, statistically, I'll give you odds right now that better than 70% of it's coming from Wigner. Yeah. Aren't small planes, though, that are privately owned usually better cared for? You know, the pilots do their own inspections. They do their own inspections. They do their own maintenance. Allow me to suggest that uh, entropy is starting to set in with a, a lot of processes, including human processes. That's right. And there are other forms of, of active interference uh, occurring in targeted locations that I think will increase over time in America. Yeah, he's right. All right, should we have Larry read five and six so we can get a little more into the well, possible we'll... buildup of, of RADs on the aircraft itself? Well, sure. Sure, we were going to go ahead and examine the effect of uh, static electricity and its contribution to all of this. It's, a, it's addition to principles of attraction, that variety of thing, and scavenging. I think Loren probably like to cover that one. <laughs> sure. As a plane is flying through a contaminated air column, for instance, uh, um, a Trans-Pacific flight, from China or Taiwan or Japan to the west coast of the United States. It's traveling through different uh, radioactive levels depending on the altitude. And even an inch or a couple of inches can have a different radiation value, contamination value, than just a few inches away. It, it just depends on many, many complex factors. And the surface of the plane has a charge on it. And so the radioactive particles that have an opposite charge will be attracted to the um, uh, charges that are opposite to it on the surface of the plane. So that radioactive particle will steal or rip off an electron from the metal crystal matrix or structure uh, on the surface area of the fuselage. As that happens, it weakens the metal and parts, especially thin metal, it's interacting with the surface of the metal. And as more and more uh, exposure occurs or more and more radiation is interacting with the surface of that fuselage, it's creating Wigner crystallization, which is crystals that grow vertically from the surface of the metal. And this can be blown off as that, that dust that we're talking about, black dust. It depends on the material, the alloy, the, the thickness of the metal that's on the fuselage. 
um, as I said before, the really thin metal that's used for crimping on, on hose, crimping hoses onto fixtures and so forth is very, very susceptible, and plus it's under high pressure in the hydraulic system. So we're going to see more and more surface damage on commercial planes, especially because they fly, they fly so frequently. And, Christina, you really should... Uh, describe that flight you went on where you changed planes twice on each leg of the flight and what you saw on those planes. Another thing is that on the daily plane accident incidents website, it's uh, for the whole planet, you can see that for the United States, they have the highest rate of airplane incidents in the world and I suspect that this is not only the high radiation exposure here but also the um, scrimping on the maintenance of planes in the United States as our economy is in decline and so in order for the airlines to save money or to make up for losses you know, from different causes they're scrimping on the maintenance and the care of the planes. And I would like you to describe what you saw on the wing surfaces of the planes you were flying on and the airline, because I'm going to make sure I never fly on that airline. Not that we would ever fly anywhere. In June of this year, I had a family emergency in Utah, and I wasn't happy about having to fly knowing what I do about planes and, and what I had been studying intensely. Uh, but I had to go on the trip, so um, in, in all of the discussions with Loren, what I've learned from her is to gather data wherever I go. So I use this as an opportunity to scout what is going on at the airports, what is going on with the planes, just from my brief perspective, which included four flights that were kind of zigzagged across the country because I had to make them on very short notice. I had to fly from Detroit to Chicago to Salt Lake City and then to Phoenix back to Detroit. And on every leg of the journey, all four trips, our plane was delayed significantly by maintenance issues. And while we were sitting on the tarmac, I start looking around at the other planes that are around us. And it was very obvious in terms of maintenance and cleanliness and just the foreign planes looked like they were in such better shape than the American planes that I That's saw. Really so, yes. Because they were. <laughs> and on one flight in particular from Phoenix to Detroit, there were eight strips of duct tape on the right wing. And I had placed all my seats in the same location for each flight so I could have like a comparison of what the right wing looked like. And they call this speed tape in the airline industry. It's actually duct tape, but they call it speed tape because it sounds better. And they use, this, <laughs> they use this over areas where there's, you know, corrosion and defects before they actually replace a panel or a part on an aircraft skin. And it was really concerning to see this. And when I got back and I, I, up, I, I did a story on it for Climate Viewer, with all of these pictures, you know, the, the people that contacted me were like, I would have never flown on that plane when they saw the pictures of this wing. But, you know, it wasn't just that. It was, it was. Everything. It was everything. Oh, cool. Hey, it's still recording. Hi, everybody. You survived a plane crash. 